Good day. So let me begin by uh, clarifying that although the title of my presentation is about fake news and how it has worsened the pandemic, I will be mentioning equally important concepts, ideas, and findings from the literature about fake news in general. So let us distinguish uh, misinformation from uh, disinformation, which are two different uh, concepts. So misinformation is when someone might unintentionally spread fake news, yet the person is not aware that such information is false. This information, on the other hand, is the deliberate act of creating or disseminating false information to cause harm. And according to experts, the producers of this information typically have political, financial, psychological, or social motivations. So why would people believe in fake news? Cognitive psychology and behavioral research offer some explanations on why people would fall for fake news even though it is false. And I compiled the most popular and relevant ones available in the literature. So uh, to illustrate the... Um, The illusory, uh, illusory truth effect says that um, our in exposure and re-exposure to misinformation tend to make us believe that it is real. Meanwhile, the familiarity effect, on the other hand, says that uh, we are more likely to believe information that we are most familiar with. Okay, how about the source effect? Sinasabi naman ng source effect na uh, naniniwala tayo sa information provided by those whom we perceive as credible. How about the ideology effect? Well, it simply says that uh, we tend to believe um, something that uh, that is aligned with our ideological uh, predisposition. Okay, and um, related to that is the con uh, confirmation bias, which says that we seek or interpret evidence that are aligned with our beliefs and values. And the primary effect, on the other hand, says that... Um, we tend to form conclusive opinions as a result of information that we first acquired. There's also what is called as the delusion effect, and it simply says that delusion-prone individuals are more likely to accept fake news because they have a low tendency to engage in analytic thinking. Dogma or religion um, effect simply says that um, dogmatic uh, individuals and religious fundamentalists are more likely to believe in fake news. Also, according to research, people who tend to uh, believe in fake news are those who lack reflective uh, reasoning or analytical thinking. Bullshit, there's also what is called as bullshit receptivity, and pardon, pardon me for using the B word. Bullshit receptivity refers to uh, not having regard for, for truth, so walang pakialam kung tama man o mali yung information so and it's and this theory says that people who have no concern for truth are more more likely to believe in fake news there's also the um overclaiming a uh, theory overclaiming meaning um, hilig pagbuhat ng mangko um, mahilig magpa magpa kitang gilas and and this theory says that um people who uh, have a tendency to uh, self-enhance when asked about other familiarity with general knowledge have a tendency to believe in fake news. Okay, so from believing in false information, let us go to the sharing part. Is it always intentional? Okay, so the answer is no. Sharing of fake information uh, does not necessarily imply belief, and a person may be sharing false information unintentionally. Okay. So why would people share fake news? Again, we can draw insights from uh, cognitive psychology. Uh, it may be the result of or it may be the effect of bullshit receptivity uh, which i have uh, explained earlier bullshit receptivity meaning the lack of regard for truth i don't care if it is true or not attitude it can also be a case of virtue signaling or purposely trying to uh, promote oneself or uh, demonstrate one's good character or the person uh, really wants to inflict harm or damage on another on another person a study by Shalinta War and colleagues also found that those with high trust in um, the content in social media, those who do not hesitate to reveal themselves or to reveal um, information about themselves in social media, and those who have the FOMO attitude, FOMO meaning a fear of missing out, ayo magpahuli, gusto lagi active sa social media, are more likely to share uh, fake news. Also, people who experience a social uh, media fatigue are also more likely to share fake news as a quick way to remain socially active virtually without putting in much effort. 
Also, a 2021 study by Apuke and Omar found other predictors of fake news sharing on COVID-19. So, these predictors include altruism or the desire to help others. And related to this is the second predictor, which is the desire to share information. Other factors that they found were socialization or the desire to uh, build and keep social uh, connections, which, as we all know, has heightened during this pandemic due to lack of face-to-face uh, -face interaction. Also, uh, the desire to seek information and to pass time. So is fake news a recent phenomenon? Obviously not. Fake news existed even in the olden times. It's as old as mankind. But what makes fake news different now is the ease by which it is produced, spread, and multiplied, given the tools of modern communication, particularly uh, social media. As we all know, with social media, it is easy to uh, disseminate information to a mass audience. And it's also easy to access information. Social media is also driven by the so-called attention economy. You might have heard of this term, attention economy, whereby the human attention is treated as a scarce commodity in the internet. Um, the human mind is exposed to a considerable amount of information online. Hence, to capture one's attention and hold it, the message should be meaningful and significant to the audience. So it's that about whether the information is true or not. It's about whether it holds meaning to the audience. And earlier, I mentioned the different ways by which the human mind may perceive a message and consider it as truth, even though it is false information. Okay. Um, and finally, the ubiquity and accessibility of social media makes it a viable channel in spreading fake news. So just to show the pervasiveness of the internet and social media, in 2020, as you can see on the screen, out of a total global population of 7.75 uh, billion, 49% are active uh, social media users, 59% have access to the internet, and 67% have access to a mobile phone. Okay, in Southeast Asia, the Philippines is one of the highest internet and social media penetration rates at 67%. We may not be the highest, but in terms of time spent on the internet and social media, Filipinos spend the longest hours online. So how has fake news affected the pandemic? In February 2020, the WHO Director General noted that the world is fighting not just a pandemic, but also an infodemic, as fake news is spreading faster than COVID-19. But what is infodemic? It's a blend of two words, uh, information and epidemic. And uh, based on uh, the definition uh, given by the WHO, it refers to the overabundance of information some accurate and some not that makes it difficult for people to find trustworthy sources and re reliable guidance when they need it. So based on false information monitored by the International Fact-Checking Network, or IFCN, which is an entity under the Journalism Research Organization Pointer Institute, Dang um, and his colleagues classify the content of fake news about COVID-19 that circulated in um, several Southeast um, Asian uh, countries as of May uh, 5, 2020. And they found out that the majority of false information in COVID-19 that circulated in uh, the Philippines, uh, in Thailand, and in Myanmar were about the symptoms, diagnosis, prevention, and treatment measures uh, on COVID. And these comprised um, 32 to uh, 46% of the fake news detected by IFCN in these countries. In contrast, the topmost uh, consent in Indonesia was political, religious, and ethnic uh, targeted fake news. False information related to government's action and regulation was the second most prevalent fake news monitored in the four Southeast Asian countries with the addition of false and misleading statistics in Thailand. So this slide uh, shows some examples of misinformation that proliferated during the pandemic. All of these may sound familiar to you. So um, on the screen are some um, fake news related to prevention or cure against COVID-19, such as uh, drinking of drinking bleach or alcohol, um, eating ginger and gargling uh, with warm uh, salt water. Okay, so this one here, uh, is about the nature of COVID-19 and some consp conspiracy theories, some, with, some of which we hear until now. 
Okay, and this one here are examples of misinformation about the side effects of vaccine and their efficacy. Okay, so just last Saturday, the New York Times uh, ran an article about a doctor in the United States by the name of Joseph Marcola, touted as the most influential spreader of coronavirus misinformation online. And according to the New York Times, uh, uh, Mercola's online article on February 9, 2021, declared that coronavirus vaccines were a medical fraud, that injections do not prevent infections, and that COVID shots alter one's genetic coding. Anti-vaccination uh, activists or anti-vaxxers easily picked up these claims, and the said article was translated from English into Spanish and Polish and reached 400,000 uh, people on Facebook. It's not easy to quantify the impact of fake news on COVID, but one thing is for sure, the effects of false information are far and wide. Um, it can expose individuals and uh, communities to further uh, risk um, from not following the health protocols and from not getting vaccinated. It con can also instigate a uh, public fear, um, public panic, uh, anxiety, creating a host of mental uh, health issues. We've also seen how hate speech and anti-ethnic sentiments against Asians and Muslims linking them to a COVID-19 have stimulated racial tensions and fueled um, xenophobic violence and discrimination. We have, all, we, have, we have heard of the harm inflicted by racial attacks against Asians in the U.S. Last year, when we hardly know about COVID-19, there were so many false information circulating about prevention and treatment measures. And we heard uh, news about people getting hospitalized from drinking bleach or rubbing alcohol. You may have also heard of the sudden spike in the price of ginger last year when news circulated that it can prevent COVID-19. In India, the meat traders, uh, particularly poultry producers and sellers, were seriously affected by false claims that circulated in April last year that eating vegetarian food and eliminating meat from the diet can prevent one from getting COVID-19. According to Indian authorities, this misinformation contributed to losses of up to 130 billion rupees or $1.8 billion to India's poultry industry. Fake news about um, government uh, uh, regulations such as the imposition of a lockdown have also um, caused uh, unnecessary hoarding and panic buying. These are just some of the impacts of fake news about COVID-19. I'm sure you have more to add to this slide. Speaking of figures, a pre-pandemic study by the University of Baltimore and Czech, which is an in, uh, Israel-based cybersecurity firm, estimated the economic cost of fake news to the global economy. And the study um, estimated that the global economy is losing $78 billion each year from fake news circulating in the financial public health and business sectors, as well as in politics. Of the total cost, public health misinformation is costing the United States alone $9 billion caused by misinformation and vaccine preventable diseases and false information about vaccines. So what has been done so far to con control fake news? Well, in the area of regulation, the Philippine government has a fake news provision in the Buy and Hand to Heal as One Act. Um, prior to the pandemic, several legislations have been proposed against a fake news, such as House Bill 6022 and Senate Bill 1492 or the Anti-Fake News Act of 2017. However, uh, these did not gain traction in the legislative mill. Other countries also have their own uh, laws uh, for this purpose. Glo globally, however, regulations purportedly against uh, Fake news uh, remain contentious and uh, controversial for a number of reasons. First is the difficulty of defining uh, fake news that raises the risk of excessive government regulation. Second is the argument that a fake news law could give the government uh, too much control over uh, uh, free speech. And third is the argument that it is tantamount to censorship. There are also websites that were put up that are dedicated to COVID-19 uh, information resources or 
um, a special section on, on, on COVID-19 in the official websites of government agencies, international organizations, and the academe. And you'll see some examples on the screen. Uh, Fact-checking initiatives of media organizations and research institutes are also on the rise. You can see some examples on the screen. And among these initiatives are, are Vera Files and uh, Rappler's own, own uh, fact-checking initiative. And I won't spend too much time on this as my co-presenters have uh, more knowledge and information on this topic. Okay, so let me end by giving some recommendations on how to combat fake news. Uh, first, it is important to increase awareness of online fact-checking tools, such as the websites that I've shown earlier, as well as um, applications and browser extensions that are publicly available. Unfortunately, awareness of these tools and how to use them is still low. Second, um, we need to acknowledge that misinformation is a societal problem. It's everybody's concern. It's everybody's problem. It's not just an issue for the government to solve or for the tech uh, companies or the media to address. And what better way um, to tackle misinformation than to engage everyone? Citizen engagement in fact checking is vital to combat fake news. Third, uh, as I have um, mentioned in the in the early part of the presentation, based on cognitive psychology, the propensity to fall prey on fake news is linked to poor analytical thinking and lack of reflective reasoning. As such, um, developing analytical thinking and digital intelligence early on in life among children in the home and school is very important. Fourth, it's also important that we make media uh, literacy part of the basic education curriculum. Four bills have been filed in Congress so far. And uh, last but not the least, let us all be part of the solution and not the problem. Uh, we need to remain vigilant. Misinformation is um, everybody's concern and we should uh, do our share in uh, combating fake news. We should make fact checking an automatic response if we receive information that we are unsure of. And as my final sentence, do not support personalities who spread fake news as well as those who produce false information. And with that, I'd like to thank you all for listening. Maraming salamat po.